Hi everyone. In this video, I will explain about the vertical amplifier and what is the internal uh, block of vertical amplifier, how it is used to amplify the signal. Uh, in the vertical reflection system, already in the CRO block diagram, you have seen what are the blocks of vertical reflection system and what are the blocks of horizontal reflection system. In vertical reflection system, what are the blocks we have? First, the input signal is applied to vertical amplifier followed by delay line and then we have given the signal to the vertical reflecting plates. In the horizontal reflection system, the output of this vertical amplifier is passing through a trigger pulse generator, thereby sawtooth waveform generator, horizontal amplifier and then given to horizontal reflecting plates. So, in that vertical reflecting and horizontal reflecting plates, we have some amplifiers. Especially in the vertical deflecting system, vertical deflection system, we have a vertical amplifier. What is the purpose of vertical amplifier? What it internally consists of? Is it a single amplifier or any other devices are there? We will see in detail about this vertical amplifier. Okay. So, vertical amplifier is nothing but the sensitivity which is nothing but gain and frequency bandwidth response characteristics of the oscilloscoper are mainly determined by this vertical amplifier. Suppose any signal, any signal if you are taking a frequency response of this amplifier, frequency response of this vertical amplifier, it will be like this because it is a wideband amplifier. In the starting one I told you the vertical amplifier acts like a wideband amplifier. So this is the bandwidth, the gap between this one and this one is nothing but bandwidth. How can you calculate the gain, gain is nothing but here. What is the amount of gain vertically? Okay, so the gain and bandwidth product should be constant. Gain and bandwidth product should be constant always. Suppose if you want to increase the gain, bandwidth should be reduced. If you want to increase the bandwidth, gain should be reduced. That means vice versa. Okay, so whatever the characteristic, whether you want to increase the gain or bandwidth of the, of the waveform, the vertical amplifier is taking care of this particular operation. So, this is point I have discussed. Some oscilloscopes give two alternatives, switching to the wide, band, wide bandwidth position or switching to high sensitivity position. Both are not accomplished here. High bandwidth and high uh, gain both are not accomplished because one increases and the another thing should be decreased in order to maintain the product to be constant okay so either of these two can be possible either increasing the gain or decreasing the bandwidth okay so block diagram of this vertical amplifier what it internally has basically it is having two different amplifiers two different amplifiers one is fat input amplifier followed by main amplifier. Main amplifier is nothing but a BJT amplifier. Okay. <clears throat> what is the importance of taking a FET amplifier at the starting? See, you may have a doubt by seeing the diagram. In the starting, I have taken the FET input amplifier and in the second case, I have taken a BJT amplifier. This main amplifier is nothing but a BJT amplifier. A push-pull configuration. Driver amplifier is nothing but it is working in the push-pull configuration. So, what is the importance of taking the BJT in the second and we have FET in the first? Because, because FET is having, if you have taken the characteristics of this FET and BJT amplifiers, FET is having high input impedance and low output impedance. BJT is having low input impedance and high output impedance. So, if you, because of this particular reason, we have chosen the FET input, FET as an input device and BJT as an output device. So, the input signal what you want to display that will be given here. What you want to display that you have to give at this particular point. After that, it is passing through an input attenuator. Input attenuator eliminates unnecessary or noisy components, or simply we can also say it avoids the loading effect. It avoids the loading effect and as well as it eliminates the noise or unwanted signals present in the signal what you have given at the input. Next, the output because this signal is not directly generated, the signal may be from any of the source because the CROs are mainly preferred for displaying any type of experimental results. Okay, so the uh, signal may be uh, having uh, some noise or unwanted signals, the, those signals must be eliminated here. The output of this one is given to FET input amplifier. 
fat input amplifier why as i told you here it is having high input impedance so that any type of signal that can be selected and that can be passing through this uh, high because of this high input impedance uh, this will not affect have affected by this loading effect um, the output of this uh, fat amplifier is passing through a phase inverter a phase inverter before before applying the output of the fat directly to the bjt which is a push pull configuration we have to make sure that the signal has must have two polarities the positive and as well as negative that's why phase inverters have to be used here to take uh, the signal in both the polarities so phase inverter see the if you see the block diagram you can say till now till this point we have one line and after this we have two lines it gives both the polarities positive and as well as negative that means the single polarity signal is going to be converted into two polarities by passing through this phase inverter phase one is opposite phase to the other okay that means one positive and one negative you can say simply for our understanding purpose so this entire thing is known as fat input amplifier because it is used in the input the output of this one is passing through a main amplifier section which is made up of bjt and it is having two amplifiers internally one is a driver amplifier another one is output amplifier one is driver amplifier another one is output amplifier so the driver amplifier is a bjt circuit it takes the input from the phase inverter it amplifies further the signal and given to this output amplifier so it is having some low input impedance and high output impedance uh, and here also the output amplifier will is be a configurable push pull configuration a push pull configuration with the output of this one is applied to this vertical reflecting plate see these are horizontal plates these are horizontal reflecting plates and these are vertical reflecting plates vertical reflecting plates by seeing the position like this you may confuse these are by seeing suppose wave plates are like this what type of plates are these are, are these vertical or horizontal don't call them horizontal as they are horizontally located okay we may think that as these are as these are horizontal direction we can say that these two are horizontal plates but it is wrong it is vertical plate okay because based on the input voltage applied here and here the movement of the electron is like this in the vertical movement depending on the vertical movement depending on the movement of the electron whether the electron move whether the electron moves vertically or horizontally that is termed as vertical plate okay these are horizontal plates because of the voltage applied here and here the electron movement is in the horizontal direction okay that's why we have taken this configurable pushful configuration of this uh, output amplifier is given to positive one uh, two these two plates one is positive another one is negative okay this is what the vertical amplifier and how the different uh, um, amplifier sections have been used in the vertical amplifier vertical amplifier plays very crucial role in improving the gain or bandwidth of the signal both cannot be accomplished at once because one is opposite to other one is quite contrast to the other because the gain and bandwidth are very important but uh, the product should be constant as i said earlier the product should be constant you have no chance to increase both the parameters you have either you can increase either gain or bandwidth or vice versa okay so these are the some of the points i have summarized uh, to explain this uh, uh, vertical amplifier next one is horizontal reflection system in the horizontal reflection system we have uh, um a ujt relaxation oscillator or you can call it as simply time based generator so this is the waveform how the waveform is going to be coming i will explain now very simple see already you may know this ujt relaxation oscillator the this transistor is ujt this is nothing but ujt uni junction transistor it is having a single junction emitter and base these are two bases this is base 2 and this is base 1 okay base 2 and base 1 this is emitter this is emitter emitter is having arrow and this is the symbolic representation of this uni junction transistor and this is the place where we are applying this sync pulse input synchronization input i told you already synchronization input will change the state of the transistor okay 
So this is the UJ relaxation oscillator having one junction, uni junction transistor. So that's why it is having one emitter and two bases. One emitter and two bases. And R1, R2 are nothing but biasing resistors. And whereas RT and CT, these are the important uh, parameters here which are helping the transistor uh, to charge. That means which are helping the capacitor to charge and as well as discharge based on that only we are having the output. See, where we are taking the output, we are taking the output across capacitor. Whenever you are taking the output across capacitor, there definitely you may have the output as the charging and discharging patterns. Okay, initially assume the charge, uh, assume that the capacitor is completely uncharged, nothing but completely voltage across capacity is zero. Okay, that means we are at this point. Initially, the voltage across capacitor is zero. So, what is the uh, status of the transistor then? Because the same voltage, voltage across the capacitor we are taking at the output as well as the emitter base junction, this junction. VB, this junction is also having the voltage that is coming from this capacitor. <coughs> okay, VBE is nothing but it is the junction voltage. If this VBE is equal to some required cut in voltage, then the transistor comes into on state. Here we have taken that voltage as VP. Okay, so VP is nothing but it is the cut in voltage of this cut in voltage of. UJT. So whenever the voltage across capacitor reaches this VP, immediately transistor comes into on state. Okay. So as initially, now we are at this position, as initially the capacitor is completely uncharged, no charge, then capacitor across the volt across capacitor voltage is zero. So what is the status of uh, transistor now? It is simply off. It is simply off open uh, off means open circuit. So what about the capacitor now? Capacitor simply charges. What is the charging path? VBB, RT and then capacitor. <clears throat> the current starts flowing from VBB and this RT and CT. So capacitor charges like this. Capacitor slowly charges until until the transistor switches on. When the transistor switches on, when the voltage across capacitor reaches this cut in voltage VP. So when the capacitor across voltage is reaching to VP, immediately the transistor comes into on state. Suppose if transistor will not come into on state, till what point it goes, what is the maximum voltage in that path? VBB. So the capacitor has to charge up to VBB. But meanwhile, what happens? The transistor comes into on state so that the transistor comes into on state means capacitor discharges in this path. So charging path is RTCT, discharging path is R1CT. Okay. So when it reaches this particular point VP, it immediately discharges like this. But it will not completely go to zero as in the previous case because the capacity is completely uncharged. Then it is zero, but now it is having a minimum voltage across that VE emitter voltage. When it reaches that VE, immediately the transition comes into off state and capacitor again charges the process will be repeated so here the charging and discharging periods of capacitor are termed as sweep time and retrace time sweep time is nothing but ts which is having the sweep time nothing but capacitor charging time and retrace time tr is nothing but retrace time retrace when it is coming back towards zero it is called retrace time Okay, so UJT relaxation oscillator help us to charge and discharge and produce as a sweep voltage. This type of waveform is known as sweep, sweep voltage. Okay, when, cap when transistor is in, in off state, capacitor charges. Until what point it has to charge? It has to charge up to VBB. Because in that path, we have the maximum voltage VBB. But as the voltage across capacity is uh, keep on applying the UJT, Whenever the voltage across capacitor reaches the cut-in voltage of the transistor, transistor comes into on state and capacitor starts discharging through resistor R1. Okay, until it uh, it discharges, discharges and up to a minimum voltage of the emitter. Okay, it will not go to zero because uh, some just a little voltage is remained there. 
residual power, residual amount of voltage is there across the capacitor and again capacitor starts charging discharging and this process will be completed and produces a sawtooth or a sawtooth waveform or a sweep voltage waveform this is what the horizontal reflection system <laughs> okay some of the key points have been written here let's go through them okay thank you